How's it going guys? I'm your host Corban Gaming. Welcome back to a very special Adventure Quest video and it is finally here guys. My guide to playing the Dodge build inside of Adventure Quest 2021. So before I start, a quick disclaimer. The information inside of this video is accurate at the time of this recording which is on 3rd November 2021. The time at which you may be watching this video may be days, weeks, months or even years down the road. So the information may or may not have already been outdated but I will try to keep a updated uh, pinned comment down in the comment section below and update it with new information every time it comes out since this game does receive weekly updates. But without further ado, let's jump right Right into the guide. Alright, so first things first, what exactly is the dodge build and how do you go about playing it? Like the stats distribution and all that. So dodge by itself, it is not exactly a full build. In fact, it is sort of like a sub build if you ask me, simply because the number of items they need to play this build is so very little. You literally only need uh, one item per slot. In fact, you don't even need to fill up all slots. Uh, like if you're really trying to min max everything, in my opinion. So, yeah, you really only need one item, uh, dedicate one item per slot out of your entire build to go ahead and play the dodge build effectively. And that is uh, really good because this dodge build, what it does is. It basically allows you to ignore all damage and all mechanics of uh, monsters and this is really good for uh, stuff like bossing. For questing, of course, you want to use your regular like maybe a new king build or something like that. But for bossing, the dodge build is by far the best build in my opinion because you don't really need to care what mechanics the monster has. You can skip it completely because chances are the monster is not going to be able to hit you unless one, you just get very unlucky or two, the monster is auto hit. And we've not really seen a lot of auto hit monsters inside of the game. In fact, 99.9% .9 of the monsters inside of this game do not have an auto hit mechanic. So you really Really don't need to be worrying too much about that now for stat build okay uh for dodge you really can just stick with your regular stats okay it doesn't matter what build you're playing warrior ranger mage beast uh hybrid beast master whatever uh the dodge build doesn't really require you to have like a strict distribution of stats but ideally you want to have some dexterity okay because dexterity does help with dodging and a lot of the stuff here okay a lot of the weapons actually are range okay and for you might want to invest uh some points in intellect as well because there are some things that cost mp but that being said though if you have if you are running a build that does not invest in dexterity or intellect it is still fine you can still play this build no problem what Whatsoever. Now, let me go right into the items that will be one thing to use for the builds. And I do not have every single item that I mentioned here, but I'll be telling you guys where to get the items for items that are not perma rare. Okay, so let's we'll start with weapons first. The best weapon that you can use for the dodge build is obviously the big dictionary. Okay, big dictionary is a perma rare weapon. So if you have it, then good for you. If you don't have it, then no point uh, in me telling you where to get it because you will literally never get it since it is a perma rare item. Okay, so for big dictionary, why is it so good? Is because it comes with this built-in spell called Panoply. 653 MP. Yes, you do need to be a mage in order to use this weapon or have some points invested in intellect. That being said, though, if you you have the also perma rare quad force miscellaneous item i guess you don't need to be a mage to use it but you know uh the chances of you having both of those items are probably not going to be very high so if you have both of those items then sure you can run it uh you can run this weapon even without a uh, mage build but if you don't have uh that weapon if you don't have the quad force item and you want to run this item then you probably want to uh you might want to look for an alternative which i will mention later on okay so that is really what the weapon is used for it gives you a defense boost 30 to mrm for five turns okay next up alternatives okay so if you don't have this perma rare weapon you can go for alchemical unity this weapon you can switch between range mode and, or magic mode so depending on whether you're a ranger or a mage you can use this weapon if you're a warrior i guess you can use it as well it's not really that uh it doesn't really affect it that much in my opinion okay and you want to click on it uh, such that the x handle is glowing and what this does is uh it will inflict a blind on your opponent the strength of the blind is dependent on how much damage you deal so the more damage you deal the stronger your blind is going to be so this one doesn't have a limit as far as i'm aware 
except for the built-in game uh, limit soft cap which is 150 so you're going to be able to inflict the maximum 150 blind on this monster if you can deal enough damage to it and uh, this weapon what people like to synergize it with is the kindred armor so the kindred armor if you build up enough charges use the kindred strike with this weapon equipped and the monster will basically get hit with a blind that's strong enough to stop them from hitting you at all so uh, yeah, this one has great synergy and you can get this weapon from the Grand Walk 2020 event. Unfortunately, this means that it is a seasonal rare and at the time when this video is released, you're probably going to have to wait uh, for about another half a year before you can get this weapon if you don't already have it. Okay, and the last alternative, okay, you can actually get this weapon from the Celestial Haven. Okay, let's go to the travel map, sail east, travel south, go to the Celestial Haven over here. Okay, explore town. <coughs> Go inside the Neko Armory, click on Advanced Shop. Shop Weapons. And here we are, Flashbang Red Granite. So this one unfortunately is range damage only. So uh, rangers are going to have the maximum use out of it. If you're not a ranger, you can still use this, no problem. Okay, so this one what it does is it has a chance of uh, inflicting a blind on your opponent depending on the number of hits. So you can inflict a maximum of a minus 34 blind, which is a decent blind, not the best, but uh, it's still decent. So if you don't have those two items that I mentioned earlier, then you your last alternative will be Flashbang Red Granite. This is available all year round so it doesn't uh, matter whether you you don't have to care about when you're watching this video it will always be available all right so that's it for weapons next up let's move on to shields and the number one shield in my opinion for this dodge build has to be titans 4 okay so if you guys have been a follower of this channel you guys will know where to get titans 4 but i'll go through that a little bit later and what's good about this shield is that every time the monster misses an attack the shield inflicts a harm damage to the monster. The shield has a toggle, so you can click on the shield and you'll basically do double the, da the harm damage to the enemy when they miss an attack. Okay, the toggle is 59 SP per turn at level 150, which honestly is pretty cheap if you ask me. And you can get this from the uh, wall between Shadow, Shadow 4 Part 2. Okay, so I'll go to Mage Shop. Wall leg over here, Quest's Wall Between Shadows, and this one, Shadow 4 2. Okay, that is where you can get the shield. And this shield, even though it doesn't really boost your blocking in any way, but it does boost your damage once you have all your blocking set up whatsoever. And the best part is, it deals harm damage, so it doesn't matter what uh, resistance the monster has, because... Again, 99.9% .9 of the monsters in this game do not have any resistance to harm damage. In fact, I'm not sure if any monster in the game actually resists harm damage. So yeah, this shield is basically good for using on just about any monster. Alright, the next shield that you want to be getting is the Eternal Twilight's Regalia shield. Okay, this one has a small chance to inflict a blind on the opponent every single... Uh, every time they attack, the chance is very very low and... You know, the blind is honestly not that great. I think it's like minus 13 or something. I can't really remember. But yeah, it's not that fantastic. You can get this from the Elnafar set quest. Uh, I can't, I'm not going to bother searching the travel map to see where it is. Yeah, this is too too much for me to search through. You guys can go ahead and look through it yourself. Okay, alternatively, we are using the NRVP's launcher. He renamed it to AQ+. Plus. By the way, you can just click on this. Uh, open new player window. Whoops, I think I clicked the wrong button. Okay. Yeah, anyways, okay, click on open new player window over here, go all the way right and here you can just click on this, this is the shortcut, go for the shadow set, eternal twilight set or whatever they call it, okay? And last but not least, uh, Emancipator's Radiance, okay, so Emancipator's Radiance, this shield, you can get it by going to the inn, okay, going right, clicking on Sage Udor, Burning Solstice, Okay, the first one, War Begets War, Umazon Uprising, this one. The last Umazon City, okay, so this is the quest reward. What it does is it increases your chance of inflicting blind by 20%. Okay, so if you are running the Flashbang Red Grenades weapon, then this will be a fantastic shield for you to use. But if you are not running any sort of blinding stuff, then I guess you can go ahead and skip out on this shield and use the Titans for or Eternal Twilight's Regalia shield instead. So that's it for shields. Moving on to armors. Okay, armor. Obviously, the number one armor uh, to use for dodge build has to be Without a doubt, Ghost Costume. So Ghost Costume is available right now and it returns every Mogloween season. So 
why this costume is so good is because it has the highest MRM inside of the game and it doesn't cost anything to get it boosted up to this MRM. So by itself, by default, it already has 89, 89, 85 MRM, which is really, really crazy, guys. By the way, uh, I forgot to mention this at the start of this video, but the cap for MRM is also 150, so it can't go above 150. The game soft caps you at that amount. Okay, so... Look at that, we are already more than halfway through, in fact, almost close to 100 MRM. And this does not come with any uh, SP cost, HP cost, or MP cost per turn whatsoever. And this is why it's the number one uh, armor for dodge builds. Okay, so if you don't have this, okay, baby, by the time you're watching this video, it's already past Mogloween season. You definitely want to wait until Mogloween is back again to pick this up, okay? An alternative that is available all year round is going to be the Fujin armor. You can get this by going to the travel map bridge, uh, sky bridge over here. Okay, so this is a pretty lengthy quest, but once you finish off the quest, you'll be able to get the Fujin armor. And the Fujin armor, what is good about it is, I'm going to showcase it to you guys. What I want to use it for is the skill over here. <coughs> The armor skill, okay, so skills, wall of wind, 392 SP, okay, you have to be inside of this armor to use it, but what it does, it gives you 24 to blocking for 3 turns, uh, decent, but you know, the fact that you have to stay inside of this armor, uh, to use it is a little bit of a bummer, but I guess it doesn't really matter, okay. And last but not least, we have Shadowfall Raymond. So Shadowfall Raymond, you can get this armor from the latest, uh, War Between Shadows quest, Okay, hold on, let me go ahead and bring out the Shadowfall Raymond armor to showcase it to you guys. So this one, it has a skill called Dust Stance. You pay 78 SP per turn to gain 12 to blocking. So uh, by itself, it already has 55 to each blocking, which is decent. Okay, it's about the standard average for all armors at this level. <coughs> your foe will also take a further minus 12 BTH, but uh, your foe will deal extra 16.4% damage. So this one has two users. One, it raises your MRM, so you'll get... Uh, an effective 67 MRM and on top of that you also have a inflict a minus 12 BTH to your foe so yeah serves double duty there uh, of course if you do get hit then uh, be prepared to eat some big damage but that being said though I think this is a fantastic armor to use for dodge build probably your best alternative out there if you don't have the uh, if you don't have the uh, it, the ghost costume okay I think this is better than Fujin in my opinion and same place go to mate shop uh quest wait no i think this one is in the latest one so yeah today's event war between shadows finale i name you deceit so once this has been removed from the today's event page you'll be able to find it inside a wallet shop okay next armor i actually don't have this is the sharap armor this one you can get it from uh heroes heart day every single year and it has a skill that it has a toggle basically you can imbue your uh, attacks and give it a chance to inflict blind on your normal attacks okay so this is a pretty good choice if you want to inflict blind you can use it with the emancipators radiant shield okay but uh this armor does cost z tokens do so do keep that in mind if you don't have the z tokens to buy this armor then i guess you can skip it and last but not least we have the hair razor magician armor this one is another seasonal armor okay this one you can only get it from the grand walk festival 2020 so again you are going to wait another half a year for it to come back okay and what's great about this armor is uh you can see here okay hold on wait wait hold on i think you can click on the armor somewhere yeah you can click on the eight 8. Okay, 157 SP to grind yourself a plus 24 boost to your MRM. So plus 24, that gives you like 79 for magic and like uh, 71 for the rest of the defenses. So pretty good, but the SP cost is a little steep in my opinion. Okay, a uh, little bit little bit of a steep SP cost, but you know, that being said, it's still a good choice if you want to play the dodge build. Alright, and that is it for armors. Next up, moving on to spells. Okay, for spells, uh, the first spell we have Imanok Edok or Code Konami as they like to call it. Okay, so this spell, you can get it from uh, Yuga, I believe. Hold on. Imanok, Imanok, where is Imanok? 
Okay, you guys in Memorial Shop. And this is the spell that... Okay, so before you do anything in your dodge build, if you have this spell, you want to cast this spell first because this spell does not stack with anything else. If you do not cast this spell first, you will not be able to stack your MRM. So you want to cast this... The very first thing you want to do is cast this spell before stacking your other MRM bonuses. And what it does is it gives you a defense boost for 2 rounds plus 30.88 to blocking defenses. Okay, this skill does cost SP... I can't remember if there's an MP version, okay? So you can find this uh, spell inside of the inn over here and click on Memorial Shop here. Spells, yeah, there's an MP version as well. Okay, so this one, quick cast spell and then this one, quick cast skill is the SP version. So if you're a mage, get the MP one. If you're not a mage, get the SP one. For me, I'm just using the SP one, okay? Next spell, okay, I actually don't have this either. This one is the Terrapin Shell spell, and what it does is it is not a quick cast, unfortunately, but it gives you a 25 boost to your M MRM for 3 turns. It also gives you an extra Earth Elemental Shield, but that is pointless if you're running a dodge build. So you can get this from Travel Map, and then you want to go to the Chess Master Saga. When the world is the Chess Master Saga? Okay, never mind. I think you can find it here as well. No, no, no. Okay, you can't find it here. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm not going to go ahead and look for it. I don't know where is it. But Chess Master Saga Cavernous Chronicle. That is a quest that you want to go to to find the Terrapin Shell spell. I do feel that uh, Imanok is better be simply because it is a quick cast and this is not. And on top of that, this one, it only boosts your blocking by 25. Whereas Imanok boosts your blocking by 30. So definitely want to use Imanok over the Terrapin Shell since both are not rare in any way whatsoever. Alright, moving on. We have pets. Okay, so for pets... Pets, you want to use, uh, the number one choice has to be Pig Drake, and you can find the twisted version of Pig Drake inside of the rare golden gift box shop. You guys already know where to find that, so I'll not showcase it to you guys, twisted Pig Drake. And there's two modes to this, okay. One, uh, it can flick choke on a monster, but we don't care about that. The other one will boost my defense, and that is the one that we want, okay. So Pig Drake is the best defense boosting pet in the whole game, so 11.15 to blocking defenses. Okay, so you can get it from here. Yes, okay, even though I said I wouldn't show it, but I'm still showing it. Whatever. Just in case you are a new player, okay. Pets and Twisted Pig Drake. Here we are. You need a rare box, which honestly isn't too hard to get. So if you want to run this build, you can try investing and see if you can get the Pig Drake. Okay, next up, we have the Bun Banneret uh, Pet and... Okay, Bun Banneret Pet, this one... It is a seasonal item. Okay, so Bun Banneret, unfortunately, you will need to wait 142 days more. Okay, uh, at the time when I'm recording this video, for Bun Banneret to come back into the void. So you can find him from uh, fighting the void monster. Okay, Bun Banneret will only come back in like another third of a year. So once he's back, you can defeat the Bun Banneret uh, monster inside of the void in order to get the Bun Banneret pet. Okay, so Bun Banneret. Not as good as Twisted Pig Drake, but uh, still decent. So let's go ahead and see what he will do. Whoops, I need to click on it. Intercept incoming attacks. Okay, so there's a toggle here. And yep, it gives me some uh, boost to my blocking defenses. 15.75. Okay, Pig Drake is still better. Okay, I think it's just the RNG on this guy. Okay, and the RNG on my Pig Drake being not that fantastic. And then the next one, I don't know why I keep going in and out. Okay, so to find the Bun Banneret when it's available in the Void, you can go here, the Void. Okay, either that or you can go to today's event. Sometimes it's in today's event. Okay, sometimes it is not. If it's not, you have to go to the Void via the Guardian Tower. Alright. Uh, next one, Possess Sword. Okay, Possess Sword, you can get this from Arya's Pet Shop, Ghost Rusters. Okay, complete the quest and you'll be able to use the Possess Sword pet. Possess Sword is not as good as the other two options that I mentioned before. So, honestly speaking, I would not get Possess Sword unless you do not have uh, the two. Because one does cause a rare Golden Gift Fox and the other one is a seasonal rare. So, if you don't have those two, I guess you can get this first since this is the only one that's available all year round inside the game. And what this does is it has a small chance to go ahead and, you know, uh, reduce the BTH of your enemies. And that is really all there is to it, okay? 
last pet eternal twilight's regalia okay eternal twilight's harbinger sorry so this pet small chance to blind your enemy each round personally i think this is slightly better than possess sword so you can see here the blind really small blind but uh i think this has a slightly higher chance to inflict compared to the possess sword and possess sword is also not level 150 so that makes it slightly weaker than pets which are level 150 like this eternal twilight's harbinger Okay, now moving on to guesses. Guess, uh, the first guess we have the core Ban Banneret guess. Same place where you will get the Ban Banneret pet. Okay, this one does come in SP as well as uh, MP versions. You can click on it to toggle it, and it will boost your defenses. Similar to the pet version, so exactly the same. Twenty three point six two. Okay, this does uh take up a spell slot, so. You know, it really depends on you if you don't have your, if you're not using your spell slots for anything else, you can add this guess in. Otherwise, there is another uh, variant of this, another guess that you can use. And this one is my preferred one or my go-to one. Whoops, a daisy. I actually don't have the armor here. Oops. Okay, I need to be in town. Okay, so the next one uh, is compressed inside of the armor, and that is the Paladin Apprentice guess from the Champion Holy Arcanist armor. Okay, or Champion Holy whatever. Depending on which armor you're using, you're using it really doesn't matter, okay? You can use any variant of the Paladin armor, it will still come with the guess. Okay, so let's switch into Champion Holy Arcanist. Let's start. So you want to click on skills and of course you want to have your uh, class armor fully trained up. You don't need the class title in order to use this skill so it doesn't matter. Paladin reinforcements and you can toggle it to cause either MP or SP. For majors, uh, you probably want to use MP. Otherwise, you want to use SP. So summon apprentice here. Once again, he's a clickable guest so he's toggleable. You can click on him and he will now boost your defenses plus 19.5 to blocking. So you can see here, he gives me the defense boost. Oh, it doesn't show up here. But yeah, he boosts your blocking by 19.5, which is really good in my opinion. And on top of that, it doesn't cost any slot. Okay, because in my opinion, the best armor in the game right now is the Paladin armor. So you're going to be using the light armor anyway. And this gas is compressed inside of it. And that saves you basically a slot that you can use for something else. Last but not least, we have the miscellaneous items. So miscellaneous items... Okay, uh, you have Space Gauntlet. <clears throat> this one is, uh, I wouldn't say seasonal because you don't really know when it's going to be coming back. Every time there's a new Marvel movie, this thing should come back, I think. Okay, so this one, you can click on it. And this is usable only once per battle, unfortunately. 235 SP grants you 60 MRM, a whopping 60 MRM. Unfortunately, it's only usable once per battle. So, like maybe if you know the enemy is going to nuke you for big damage next round, this can be a quick panic button. But the fact that it's only usable for one turn and that this item does cause Z tokens make it not that effective. But that being said though, if you have it, I guess you can sort of uh, incorporate it into your build if you like, if you just want to, you know, avoid that one big nuke from the enemy next up is the one that i'm currently using is back of mixed nuts this one comes with a whole bunch of effects but the effect that you want to focus on is walnuts 216 sp over here gives me 30 to blocking for one turn so uh the sp cost is not really high 216 is pretty cheap unfortunately it's only one turn but you know uh, all things considered is good enough this is a perma rare item so if you have it then you can use it if you don't have it then i guess you uh have to look for other alternatives next up we have the bright slayer duck so this one actually doesn't boost your mrm or blind the monster in any way but this does do ice damage each time the monster misses you so for every miss uh that the monster does this thing will inflict uh, damage to your monster similar to titans 4 but this one is locked to the ice element damage so if the monster uh, does not have good resist against the ice element then this is not going to be so effective on top of that this can also miss so if the monster has high mrm themselves then there's a chance that you might miss with this but that being said this is a great way to increase your damage output if you are playing a dodge build Alright, next up we have the Legendary Shadow Crystal version 1. I have to wait for Rock Day. Okay, today is not Rock Day, but <clears throat> during Rock Day, you have a plus 10 to MRM blocking. And that's basically it, I guess. That's what you want to use it for. Okay, uh... You can't really use this for the dodge build if it's not rock day, but I can get the feather of the rock, but uh, that one only boosts your MRM by 4, which is really piss poor, so I wouldn't recommend getting that at all. Okay, if you don't want to run Shadow Crystal, you can run Horror Show. 
This one is better. Okay, it gives 9 MRM and you don't have to wait for a rock day to come around. So 9 MRM, this is basically your best uh, non-rare, non-premium miscellaneous item that you can use for your dodge build. Okay, and that is it for all of the loadout. So uh, number one, weapons. Okay, big dictionary if you have it. Otherwise, alchemical unity, seasonal rare. If you don't have that, flashbang red grenades. Okay, shields. Titans for number one for increasing your damage output. Otherwise, Eternal Twilight's Regalia, which is uh, available all year round, or Emancipator's Radiance, which uh, you'll want to use only if you're using Flashbang Red Granny, so any other stuff that blinds the enemy. Otherwise, don't use Emancipator's Radiance. Armors, okay, this is the big one. Ghost Costume, which is available right now and available during Mogoween seasonal item. The best armor they want for a dodge build. Hair Razor Magician, this one available during Grand Walk, another seasonal item. Fujin Armor available all year round. Okay, unfortunately, the skill means that you have to stay in your armor. Otherwise, your defense boost goes away. And last but not least, Shadowfall Raymond, again, available all year round. Dust Suns can inflict a blind on your opponent. And on top of that, gives you 12 MRM for a small SP cost every single turn. Okay. So my recommendation for armor will be Ghost Costume number one, Shadow for Raymond number two, uh, food Hair Razor number three, Fujin number four, and last but not least will be Sharap. Okay, almost forgot about Sharap. Sharap is tokens only, so not many people are going to get there. And Sharap you can use with your Emancipator's Radiant Shield as well. Spells Imano Edo, uh, basically the only one that you want to get. In my opinion, I think this one costs go only. There's a SP and MP variant, so choose the one that suits your current build. You don't have to change it, change your build to suit the spell. Change the spell or skill to suit your build. Okay, so Imano Edo, this is the number one thing that you want to cast before you even start doing anything. Okay, because if you don't cast this first, it will not stack with anything else. Okay. Terrapin Shell is another spell. This is strictly a worse version of Imanok Edok, in my opinion. So I would honestly not recommend getting that. Both of these are not rare and uh cost go. So you know, just go ahead and get the one that you prefer. But Terrapin Shell is weaker, so get Imanok instead. Alright, pets. Pick Drake number one. The best uh, pet for dodge builds. Okay, this one does cost a rare golden gift box. I don't know when it will go away. But while it's still here, get it while you can. Rare golden gift box. You can swap it inside of your account manager. You need 25 common gift boxes to get one rare golden gift box. Which honestly isn't too hard. Okay, Ban Banneret Guess is the next best alternative. Ban Banneret Pet is the next best alternative. This one is seasonal. You have to wait another 142 days for this pet to come back. Okay, and a really good boosting pet as well. Possess Sword, if you don't want to wait and if you don't have the Golden Gift Boxes, this one you can find from Aria. Okay, Possess Sword, this is an underleveled pet, so it will not be as good as a level 150 pet. What it does is can inflict a blind on the monster. And then last but not least, we have Eternal uh, Twilight's Harbinger, available all year round as well. This is level 150, ha slightly higher chance than the Possess Sword to inflict the blind, but the blind for this is going to be slightly weaker than the Possess Sword's one. Okay, so on depending on which one you want to use, you know, you can use either one. All right. Guesses, Paladin Apprentice, the number one guess that I would recommend for all dodge builds. Compress inside the Paladin armor, so that saves you a slot. Alternatively, you can get the Bun Banneret guess. Okay, this one does cost a spell slot, so you're going to have to dedicate one spell slot just for this. And on top of that, this is also seasonal. Last but not least, miscellaneous items. So, Space Gauntlet, Z token item, only available when a Marvel movie comes out. Don't know when that will be. Okay, uh, Bag of Mixed Nuts, Perma Rare, so if you don't have it, then you can't use it. Bright Slayer Dirk, another Perma Rare, that increases your damage, similar to Titan's Fall. And then we have Legendary Shadow Crystal. Okay, this one only usable during Rock Day, so honestly not that recommended. Horror Show Void Visor, the free version, basically this should be your number one option to go to if you don't have any of the other items that I recommended on the list. Okay, I will get this over Legendary Shadow Crystal. In fact, I wouldn't even recommend getting Legend... Sh legendary shadow crystal unless you're using it for the other days as well in which case you can use it to compress stuff inside but that also means that on certain days you'll not be able to use it for your dodge build all right so that is it for the items uh list 
for the Dodge build. Okay, and with that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video and hopefully you have found the video helpful on how to play the Dodge builds and what items you need. So in order to play the Dodge build, the number one thing that you need to do is cast Imano e Dog first and that is basically it. Afterwards, you can turn on your toggles, blind the opponent, you know, uh, boost your MRM depending on what the opponent has. And once you have boosted your MRM to a ridiculous amount, making sure the enemy can't hit you, okay, then you can purple rain everything back to gain back all of your resources and then you can uh, start laying on the pain uh, to your opponent. That being said though, you do need to keep a, a lookout on your SP as well as MP bar, okay, and heal up wherever necessary and make sure you have your defense boost at all times. On the last time of your defense boost, you definitely want to refresh it, okay, to make sure that uh, you can continue to chip down the enemy and the enemy does not hit you. Right, so the dodge build is actually a really rewarding build to play and is really fantastic for bossing, for quest Thing. you want to use uh, your standard build like your fully offensive builds for you know quicker gameplay i would not recommend the dodge build for questing simply because it is going to be super duper slow all right so if you guys have found a help, the video helpful, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And do let me know down in the comments below what you think of the guide. If I left out anything, do let me know down in the comments as, below as well. And yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. And till the next time, I'm your host, Carbon Gaming. Peace out.